Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. So glad to be here. So glad to be in the house of God with the saints of God. Again, praise the Lord. I feel like I've been away from home for so long. Uh, I promise I ain't been sitting out. I've been working. Praise the Lord. Working hard for the Lord. Amen. Working hard for my house, too. Praise the Lord. Amen. But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. We do give honor to the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. The God that saved me, the God that kept me. Amen. Just in case y'all wondered, I am saved. Praise the Lord, and I'm sanctified. Praise God. I put a difference between that which is clean and unclean. Between that which is holy and unholy. I made a decision. Praise God. I was going to follow the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm going to begin reading at verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 8. When you got it, say read the book. Read the book. According to King James, it says like this in verse 8, And it fell on the day that Elisha passed through Shunem, where was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that all as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on the day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and laid there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, his armor bearer, call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he said unto, and, and he said unto him, this is Elisha speaking to Gehazi. Gehazi, say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell amongst my own people. In other words, I'm good. I'm all right. This man right here. If I ain't got it, somebody done broke out. That's what she said. And he said, then what then is to be done for her? She turns away, she leaves. This is Elisha speaking to his armor bearer once again. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily she had no child, and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare the son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, this is verse 18, you with me? Yeah. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called upon, and she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. It shall be well. From verse 20. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on his knees to the moon, then died. Father, in Jesus' name, I have no words of my own and I have no voice. And Father, your people can't hear a whisper preacher. Pray God that you anoint this a voice of mine that it be able to carry. Give me a word that will give us a glory, a word that will give us a revelation of how to live a holy and sanctified life. A noble with power to stand, to proclaim the oracles of God. Let not my speech, preaching, and teaching be done with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with demonstration of your spirit and your powerless. In Jesus' name I'm asking. Amen. 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 I want to preach this morning. Uh, I ain't going to even preach. We're just, we just, we just talking out. We're just easy to speech out. My Easter speech is entitled this morning, Resurrect My Promise. Resurrect My Promise. The Word of God, the Bible, the Holy Script, the infallible truth. It is comprised of 66 books. It is divided into two divisions. 
of those two divisions is known as the Old and the New Testament. The Old Testament is comprised of 39 books, while the New Testament is comprised of 27. Out of these 66 books, there are 1,189 chapters. Out of those 1,189 chapters, there is 783,137 words. Out of all of those words, there are 7,487 promises in this word. And as quiet as it is kept, a lot of us have lost confidence in promises. Simply because the people that have made the promises have broken it because they are not charged to their character. That if they make a promise, that they ought to keep that vow and not to break it. Another verse of scripture even encourages this. He said, it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. But there is somebody whose character is built around making statements and showing up on it. There's no witnesses in here. No one talking to me. Go look further. There is somebody who holds a record of saying if anything that he says he's going to do, he's so bad that he has a clause in his word that says that, that he watches over his word to perform his word. In other words, when God says a thing, praise God, there's no responsibility on my behalf to make that promise come true because if God says it, it's sure not going to come to pass. Why? Because he said there is nothing that he sent his word out to do and that, that would not be accomplished. He said it will not turn back to be void. In other words, the word of God is something living. Praise God, it has an assignment. The word of God has legs. It has arms. It is action. Praise God. It is out to perform. It ain't just a statement. Praise God. It's a demonstration. Yeah. Are y'all with me in here? Praise God. The word of the Lord teaches us, praise God, in the book of Deuteronomy, that there were some who considered themselves to be prophets. And they were wondering, um, the people began to wonder the question, how shall we know that this prophet is a true prophet of God? He said, well, this is simple. He said, that one say that God say something and it don't come to pass. That means it won't go. It was that prophet that spoke presumptuously out of their own spirit. Why? Because anytime God says something, he does not need validation by any man. Praise God to make sure that his word comes to pass. I read in another verse of scripture, Elder Murphy, praise God, he said that when God is ready to make a decision, he takes a counsel with his own self. Y'all ain't saying that. When God is ready to make a decision, he calls a board meeting in heaven and he sits down, praise God, at his big table and he takes a seat at the head of the table and he consults himself only. Y'all ain't hearing what I say. He's so bad that when he consults himself, praise God, he swears. He said, I tried to find something that carries weight and holds value. Something that holds true that I can swear on. Praise God to make sure that you know that I mean business. That when I see something's going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. And he said, when I search and I can find no other thing, he said, I swear on my own name. That's a bad man, ain't it? Praise God. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? A God that's so bad that he'll speak what he means and he'll mean what he said. Praise God. Not only that, but he can back up what he said. Praise God. There's a Greek saying that they ever say has. It's called rest non-verbal. It's a Greek statement that means basically uh, uh, deeds before actions. In other words, put up or shut up. Don't say that. No, but ain't no need to do it all this talking. I need to see demonstration. You know what? My mother had a reputation before she met the Lord, and the Lord met her real good. She had a reputation, praise God, for fighting for it. You understand? Praise God. I ain't saying this to put it to shame. We just testified about how good that the Lord is being. And when I begin to question, I said, Mama, I always fight. You got it too. I said, What happened? She said, I'm quiet. I don't bother nobody. Said they always started with me. I said, Everybody. Started with you. How did the fight start? She said, Well, a lot of times they just get up and start running their mouth and talking junk. And she said, She said, I, I won't go sit there and keep talking junk going back and forth, waiting for you to hit me. She said, I pop in first. Y'all don't stand up. In other words, you got to be somebody that ain't about all this talking. Praise God. If you feel froggy, you just don't have to leave. Y'all ain't saying that. If you feel like doing so, I need to see some action. Y'all don't like that kind of Let me go back to the group. Some of y'all scared. Why you can't testify. Praise God. But, 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 but when the Lord saves you, praise God, that does not change your characteristics of who you are. Praise God. If it was a jump starter in the street, y'all ain't saying that. You ought to be a jump starter in the body of Christ. Praise God. If there's nobody else that wants to set their hands 
to do what the will of God is. You want to be the first to want to jump. To draw your attention to 2 Kings chapter 4. See how quick I'm moving along. I'm doing so good, ain't it? 2 Kings. Y'all still got the book open? Yeah. Right over 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 8, we find that here the Bible teaches us or it records that it fell on the day that the, uh, the, the prophet Elisha, this is not Elijah, this is the predecessor, this is the one, I'm sorry, this is uh, 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 the one who was taken over the school of prophets after Elijah has been caught up in the world where he once was a son, but he hung around with his father long enough. Praise God that when his father had got caught up, the mantle fell from the father and turned to him and his brethren who he fellowship with because he was the one that stuck close to father and got the mantle he has now changed from a brethren to a father and one of the most uh, prolific things that we can see if one really has the mantle of the leader is that you've got to watch the one who performs the same duties as the leader you understand has nothing to do praise God if you call him father of it has nothing to do, praise God, if you shine your shoes and brought them clothes. You understand? But this that we speak of is a spiritual transaction. And when one has received a spiritual transaction of receiving a mantle, that's demonstration of that person's spirit that is shown through yours. Do you understand? If you remember that when Elijah got caught up before he crossed Jordan River, he took his, his garment off and he slapped Jordan. And the rivers had, and they opened up, and they, ran, and they crossed over. Now, after this has transpired, Elisha has caught the mantle. The Bible said that Elisha is on one side of the river, and his brethren, the other schools of the prophets, are on the other side. And uh, through demonstration, mm -hmm, Elisha said that if the God that was with my father is with me, he said, I'm going to try and see. Y'all ain't saying that. If the same spirit that was on my father, if it's on me, he took the same mantle and he slapped the same river and the same thing took place. His brother has said that this must be our new father for the spirit of Elijah rests on him. Y'all yeah. yeah. with me? Y'all with a good demonstration. So the old miracles that Elijah had performed don't forget now Elisha asked, he said, Lord, he asked his father, he said, I will double of your spirit. And because he had double of his spirit out of all of the miracles that Elijah had performed, Elisha started performing double of the miracles because he had double portion of his father's spirit. You understand? Praise God. And, and, and we find here, here is Elisha that while he's on his evangelistic field, that he's passing through Shunem. While he's passing by, there is a great woman that does not give a description of name, but it gives a description of her character. And uh, there's a lot of folk, praise God, that want to go down and record by their name. But I want to know, is there anybody that can go down and record for your character? So if there's anybody that don't mind nobody looking over you, just as know that that's a man of God. By my name, just and that's a preaching boy. Y'all ain't hear me here. It ain't no matter. Praise God, you ain't got to call me, darling. Ain't got to call me, Bishop. Baby. Just don't call me the N word to the face. Don't do that. You don't have no problem. Praise God, but just as long as you know that that's a praying boy. Y'all understand. This was a great woman who was not concerned about her name, but she had greatness in her because of her faith, her character in God. And when she saw that the man of God was passing through, amen, she would begin, amen. Extra plate, praise God. When supper time came, and she messed around, right asked her husband and said, Baby, I perceive that this one that's passing by, he ain't no fake, praise God. He ain't out here for no one. I perceive that this man lives holy, he's a man of God. I believe that this is a true prophet. Said, Honey, would you allow me to turn the attic upstairs into a bedroom? Say, when the man of God is passing by, he ought not have to worry about the people putting up in a hotel. And he shouldn't have to worry about stopping at McDonald's late at night trying to get no food. Hey, man, if the man of God is in town, praise God, we ought to be able to have a bedroom for him. And I want to put some food on him, you understand? Praise God. And, and, and the husband had inclined her to this reason. And she had made him a room. And every time he would pass by in the city, the man of God was stopped by him and his mama bear would stay up into their attic and she would bring them a plate of food. You understand? So at the time has passed, the man of God is feeling gracious. 
because he realized that anytime anybody does anything for you, amen, they ain't got to do it. Praise God. I know you're a wonder, I know you're preaching somebody, but folk ain't got to give you nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. Praise God, I know you preach good, but ain't nobody got to give you no offer. Y'all understand. Ain't nobody got to acknowledge your title. Praise God, but because he understood, praise God, her value and what she done, praise God, as a prophet of God, he had to delegate an authority to take action in the spirit and in the natural. Notice what he does. He calls his armor bearer by the name of Gehazi and says, call that woman upstairs real quick. And if you can understand what's going on, that the conversation is not happening between Elijah, uh, Elisha, and the woman. He's using Gehazi, his armor bearer, as a buffer. You understand? That she is called upstairs and Gehazi is standing in the doorway. And the prophet of God is possibly sitting at the table that she gave him, or he was sitting on the bedside, and he says to Gehazi, to ask the woman, what can I do for her? Can I speak to the king for her? Or can I speak to the captain? Understand that this is a preacher, that this is a prophet, that he is not just somebody in the church, but obviously has a pool. Oh spirit but obviously he is somebody in the natural because he says can I speak to the king for you or shall I speak to the captain for it don't make no sense to be a wonder in here and don't nobody know you outside of here you a prophet in here but don't nobody know you see that your job that's a problem y'all ain't saying that in here, but you don't pay your bills on time at your own house. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Am I talking good? Praise God. He has some pool in the natural that he is just not somebody in the house of God, but his name has gone out before him and has made him great among men. That he has influence in government. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So by way of natural, naturalism, he's asking what can I do for you in the natural? Do you have any need in the natural? Praise God. How you find your food looking? Is the deep freezer good? Y'all ain't saying that. Is your taxes too high? Is you able to keep up with the bills? He understand. And, and, and the response to him was, praise God, I live amongst my own people. In other words, around here we all family. And we good. If I ain't got that family down the street, got it. Praise God. If I need a cup of sugar, if I need four cups of sugar, I ain't got but one. It don't take nothing to walk down the street and ask me, uh, 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 Murray down the street to get there. And that three more cups of sugar, that's the type of relationship we have. And so she walks away saying, I'm all good, prophet. But while she walks away, there's another conversation going on between the bishop and his servant, Gehazi. So he asks her again and said, now that I just wish that there was something that I could do for her. And, and, and Gehazi responds back to the prophet by way of observation. He said, well, I observe, praise God, that she has no child and on top of that, her husband is old. Uh, he said, now, now, if you want to do something, I believe that any woman will want to have a child, but her husband is old and that might be a barrier to why she can't bring children. So, Elijah says, call her back up here. Are y'all singing with me? Call her back up here. When he called her back up, she stands at the top of the stairway of Gehazi standing in the door frame and Elijah is sitting on the side of the bed in the room and he says, woman, by this time, uh, by, by, this, by, by the time of life, according to the season of life, you will bring forth a son. When he prophesied, she gave a statement back. She says, man of God, let me, let me go ahead and stop. Let me, let me go ahead and stop. You ain't, you ain't got to try to be deep. I know you're a prophet, but you ain't got to prophesy. What I'm doing for you is out of the kindness of my heart. I'm not looking for anything in value. You, you, you ain't got to you ain't got to play with my emotions like that. You ain't you ain't got to say nothing like that to make me keep giving to you. I, I'm gonna keep serving you because you're a man of God and I fear the Lord. You ain't got to lie with me. Don't play with my emotions like this. But the Bible says that after the next season, according to the time of life, and that's nine months. Nine months later. 
later, she gives birth to a son. Now, that's verse 17. If y'all would look with me at verse 18. Now, there's some time that has lapsed between verse 17 and verse 18 because the ending of verse 17 says that according to the time of life, which is nine months after she received her prophecy, that she is giving birth to a son. But now we read in verse 18, it says that when the child was not grown, stick with me now, when the child was not grown, now, he is still considered an, ass, an, an adolescent, but he is not considered a baby. Uh -huh. the, the, the concept that this, that the child is grown is indeed a fact that the child is weaned. He is beyond the age of, uh, of, of weaning. Praise God, he is now how to learn how to learn how to walk, how to talk. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He's starting to form opinions. He's about the age of 10, uh, 10 years and 9 months to probably about 12 years and 9 months. You understand what we're we'll going with. Praise God. But in this particular time of about 10 to 12 years, there is a change in the dynamics of the relationship between these three people. Now, just give me a few minutes. Let me dissect it. You can tell me if, if you think it's too much or not after the fact. Do you understand? But let's dissect the scripture together. Now, I got a problem here because uh, something takes place that when the child, praise God, he said that he runs out to his father who is out in the field with the reapers, which tells me, praise God, that this is harvesting time. You understand? So this is not the heat of the moment in summer, if I'm not mistaken. It's about the fall, right before the fall hits, right? Praise God. So it's not summertime where the heat is bearing too much. Praise God. It's kind of cooler in the evening. You understand? But this is somehow uh, uh, between early in the morning before the sun is too hot in the day. But while the young man runs to his father, the statement that he makes to his daddy is that he screams, my head, my head. And the response that he gets from his father is one that has no empathy, neither does it have any emotional attachment. Because when he speaks to his father and says, my head, the response that the father gives is he speaks to one of the servants, that's the lad, and say, take him to his mother. Y'all ain't saying that here now. Now, now, fathers that's in here, I know you love your boys and you love your girls, and any time one of them at least cries that they're hurting, maybe the statement that you just might give is, can somebody take my son, you understand, uh, take my boy to his mama, amen, for her to get some medicine to him. But the statement that's made is to say, take the child to his mother. Don't that seem a little harsh? Some seem a little funny with that. Now, let's go back here just a little bit. Praise God. I, I, would just like to suggest that this father has no emotional attachment to this promise, has no attachment to this child because he does not believe in the legitimacy that this child is his. Now let's go back again. All this man knows is that there was a strange prophet coming into town. His wife asked to build a room in the attic and after a while, as old as I am and I haven't had a child, now we made sure Now, if the prophet had a room 
at your house. Why now we got to run the town to find the prophet? Because one of these circumstantial evidence, I would like to believe that in that time period between when that child was born and by the time the town was grown, that there was a conversation in the master bedroom. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, now look at me like the between them. Now listen, either you or him. Brainwashed you, but it ain't that I'm brainwashed, it ain't that something wrong 
get it, is that my spirit knows something that my mind is not caught up to yet. And you ain't got time to go back and forth trying to explain the things of the spirit to a person that's calling a mind. First of all, it's hard for you to wrap your head around. Yes. Come on here now, let's be truthful. It's hard for you to wrap your head around what God promised you. And it's hard for you to wrap your head around. Now you trying to tell me you're going to try to convince somebody else of what the Lord told you. Come on, we ain't got time. Because what we deal with is a, is, is a time-sensitive situation. It's that she says it almost shall be well. It don't make sense because the last time the father heard anything going on, the boy head was hurt. And you've been upstairs for at least about three hours. Now all of a sudden you come downstairs and now you got to run the town to go see him. Y'all don't understand. I guess it's something else. It's something else now. What do you do when your promise dies in your life? That's a good question, right? Does anybody have an answer? What do you do with your promise when it dies in your life? We have to do the same thing that this woman does. She takes the promise back to the place where the promise was made. Let's say that again. She, she takes the promise back to the place of where the promise was made. See, the thing is, you was faithful in God's house singing in the choir. You were ushering it, you know I mean, happy. Just believe in God for a husband. Yeah. Lord, oh, see that love, all that kind of, Let me use some message. Some of y'all sensitive about this mouth stuff. Let me move some. Y'all yeah, went here praying to God. Lord, I want a job. I need a better job. So I need a better job. Lord, I just need a job. You was in here shouting and dancing. Bro. But you were happy. Because you believed in God to give you a job. Right here where you was being faithful. The Lord gave you a promise. Get ahead of your duties. Oh, it's quiet in here now. Oh, now, 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 the book, now the book said that, uh, that his people have wicked ways. And some saints don't believe they got wicked ways. I'll tell you how wicked people can be with their ways. When the Lord bless you with a job that you've been asking for, and then you keep the money that you're supposed to be paying tithes with, for your sin, that's wicked. Oh, y'all quiet in this time. I preach for pressing tears. I don't know how to get through this. Let me ask you something. Now listen. I know how to pull it through here. I should do it. When the Lord has given you a promise, but now you started taking up extra shifts. Now it's something to take your time over. You believe in God for that call. Now when you was in here, Lord, if you give me a call, I'll never make it to you. 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 I'll be the first one in there. Child, you done put so many miles on that call. You're running your chariot up and down the road. you taking your neighbor to groceries. You done went out of state on vacation. Now you can go on vacation. I ain't about to go on no vacation. I ain't saying nothing like that. But now they're using a cop. That's fine to get this feeling. They ain't got no gas. It's four dollars in the train. Now I can't Oh, my promise that God made. But let me tell you something. When that promise, when that cost of that promise starts to get slowed up, and you know what? You got to bring the promise back to where the promise was made. Believe the God with that husband. Now, now you ready to tear his head off? He ready to tear yours off? You done started, you done made another bad guy on the side. You don't even know nothing about it because you're making an exit plan. Back to the place where the promise was made, and what you do, you leave it there. You understand? Well, I'm gonna do. I'm going ahead. I'm headed. That's my point two. This is the point three. Now, the point three that we try to make is when she gets to the man of God. Notice what happens. She gives a command to the boy that's driving her 
to Mount Carmel. She said, I miss it when I get in here. She said, drive and go fall. Go fast. This, this, this is what I tell you. She told God, I miss it when I get in here. She said, boy, drive and go fall. Slow down for my for my sake. No, not unless I be. Y'all yeah, in here. She said, boy, put the pedal to the neck. Don't wear my knee top. Stay true. Say it's, 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 it's time, sister. Listen to me, boy. Say, try. I don't care about my knee pot hole. Now unless you hear me holler, say slow down. You give it all you got. Those were the instructions. Drive and go fall. Now when she gets to the man of God, when she gets to the man of God, she says this. Now, sees her fall, because he's at the top of Mount Carmel, and she's coming to the bottom, and she's at the, at the bottom of the hill, and the prophet can gauge that it's up. He said he's got to ease out, because remember now, we done got beef. The husband will put him out of the house now. The husband will put him out of the house. Now you're chasing me, I'm spending my business trying to spend time with the Lord. He said, every time we had a conversation, I didn't let you in my bedroom. Now, hey! What's up, Lord? Yeah, I'm here. He said, hey, you better run down and catch him, catch him, catch him. Prophets and preachers, I clap 
The Lord talks to you. He deals with you in dreams and visions. But ain't nobody that got the whole picture. The Holy Ghost ain't telling everybody everything. He said you're prophesying Paul. Because I know him Paul. My master will never give one person the whole picture. Sit. 
Y'all know sir was late my mom over here. Now he done said something outside of his neck that got you ill. Now you're in the wrong spirit. But now you're still trying to get to the house. And they go. You understand what I'm trying to tell you, right? It shut obedience. It's better than sacrifice. Do y'all know where that comes from? That was that was song. He disobeyed the Lord. Lord gave him instruction, he didn't do it. Killed everything, but kept the sheep that kept, kept, kept the king, kept the sheep back there. He said, Lord, I can do something with these sheep. I can give a ransom no doubt for the king. He said, that was my instruction. I told you to kill everything. He said, Lord, I'm going to make a sacrifice, but I'm going to kill this. He said, the sacrifice is not what I wanted. I wanted obedience. Are y'all understand what I'm trying to do? Obey God the first time. We ain't got to get no offer later on. Does that make sense? Do what you ask now so you don't get told later on. Okay. I've got to do my three points. Here we go. Okay. Ready? First of all, we do not have time to convince people or try to sell people on the promise that the Lord has made us. He made it to you. You want to believe it. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I can't wait for your validation to make it. Do you think I can do it, brother? If the Lord told me, and he's gonna assist, he said, I'm gonna do it. Now, I ain't got time to Sister Murphy, you think if I step down there and folk that folk will really tell me here, I ain't got time for that. Because if Sister Murphy ain't in the right spirit, child, when I was out there, it was hard. If I was you, I'd I stay where I am as long as I can. And the Lord done told you what he promised he was gonna do for you. Now you're gonna waste 10 more years. Sitting looking like a wonder. Y'all ain't hear me. So we ain't got time to convince people on the promise we made. And on top of that, it should not matter if they got the same blood, the same last name, or if you share the same baby. The truck, the thing about it was the man was downstairs with propagating words. So it won't let you get in here. You know how many people sit up under here right now heard the promise that God made you through prophecy? That's painting that it won't come to pass.
and make more moves. Don't 
What you gonna do? He said, hey, you take my stand. I, I, I ain't want the haze. You come down here, to, you come up behind me. Just in case you don't work out like you. Come on down here with me. Are y'all with me? Take When your promise starts to lose its post, you bring it back to the place where the promise was made. Do you hear me? Write that down. That's, that's point number two. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to see what we are. I'm getting my three points. I get that. When your promise is losing its pulse, you bring it back to the place where the promise was made. You get bent out of shape because you done left your pulse of where the promise was made. It's not even necessarily your pulse of duty. You was in a place of consecration. Spending time with God when he gave you the promise. Now the promise that made you so busy that you can't even meet God like you used to. And now when you got troubles with the promise, you trying to figure out what to do. You better get to back to that place where the promise was made. That means you need to find yourself back in that place of prayer. Where it was. And we took all that prayer to give you. It's going to take all that prayer to give you. Did you hear what I just said? When you was caught and you was all in a face. Yeah. Oh, you were caught and you were finding everything. Yeah. What would you do? Yeah. You let her order food first, just in case she ordered the steak and ribs. You ordered the steak and ribs, what you gonna get? You know what? I'm gonna eat this gravy. The house didn't go through right, the paperwork didn't go through, you just 
Oh, I'm, I'm just stupid. I'm, just, I'm not about to be worried about it. The Lord made the promise before we get down to throwing it up for it. Put some more time on it. The Lord said it. I believe in God. Ain't that right? Am I talking right? You're too quick to let the promise die. Because you're in your feelings. Now you're either going to be in your feelings or you're going to be in the spirit. Which one? He said, Lord, help me to mortify the deeds of my flesh and I won't fulfill the lust of the earth. So, Father, help me to walk in your spirit. And you can't decide if you want to be spiritual today or if you want to be carnal today. Help me real quick if you believe it. Say, Lord, Lord resurrect my promise. Boy, y'all sound the same. Sound it right in the feet. Sound it right in the feet. Thank <laughs> you. 